Hi. My name's, <laughs> how is everybody today? Tonight, good? Did you have a good day? Enjoy the weather? Yeah. It was kind of nice. My name's Carol Grazer. I'm the host of the Poetry Night here at Cafe Lena. We have a poet here who traveled um, an arduous journey up from Washington, D.C. He had a lot of adventures along the way. We have Indran Amir Yagam here tonight. Let's hear it for him. Let's give him an extra loud round of applause. Um, we are going to start off uh, with his reading, which is going to be live streamed. So you guys' applause and comments are going to be on air. And uh, he's going to come up and read for about 20 minutes. Um, we also had scheduled a reader, Sarah Cahill Marone, who was not able to make it. She had a, a lot of pressing matters at work. She wasn't able to get away. But Indran is going to read a couple of her poems to start off the night. And, um, her information is still on online. If you want to read more about her work, you can do that. Um, when we do the open mic, that's we're going to have Indran read, and then we'll have the open mic people come up. You get two short poems, one long one. I'm going to start off the night with a poem by Alicia Ostriker. This is called The Dogs at Live Oak Beach, Santa Cruz. As if there could be a world of absolute innocence in which we forget ourselves, the owners throw sticks and half-balled tennis balls toward the surf, and the happy dogs leap after them as if catapulted. Black dogs, tan dogs, tubes of glorious muscle, pursuing pleasure more than obedience. They race, skid to a halt in the wet sand. Sometimes they'll plunge straight into the foaming breakers like diving birds, letting the green turbulence toss them until they snap and sink teeth into the floating wood, then bound back to their owners, shining wet with passionate speed for nothing, for absolutely nothing but joy. And that's Alicia Ostreger. All right. So Indran achieved a unique record in 2020 by publishing three new poetry books, each one written in a different language. His two newest books are 10,000 Steps Against the Tyrant, which was published by Broadstone Books in 2022, and El Seno by RIL Editoras in 2021. He's published a total of 22 poetry collections. He's recorded a spoken word album, Rank Out Doubt, and he's won the Patterson Poetry Prize, received fellowships from the Foundation for the Contemporary Arts, the New York Foundation for the Arts, the U.S.-Mexico Fund for Culture, and the McDowell Colony. He edits the Beltway Poetry Quarterly, which is an online journal. And let's, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing his work tonight. Let's give him a huge round of applause. Thank you very much. Really honored to be here at Cafe Lena. Um, been looking forward to this reading for a while now. Um, and um, I'm going to, and Sarah Cahill Marin, my partner in poetry, we together we publish uh, Beltway Editions, which is a new poetry press. Our first book is just coming out in a few weeks called Our Ancestors Did Not Breathe This Air, an anthology by uh, poets, uh, six Muslim women poets, all from MIT. Um, I can tell you about that later. And uh, so Sarah wasn't able to make it at the, because of a work conflict that came up at the last moment. But uh, I, I said I would read three of her poems just so you have an idea of her work. So I'll begin with reading from Sarah's Cahill Marin's Nothing You Build Here Belongs Here. My mountains could care less about you. My mountains could care less about you. Steel structures clinging, tendrils rising, curling fingers, desperate, lonely, clutching, dry and desolate. You've buried basements and pools, trying as only the hairless do, to stay cool as if the heat is a thing you can hide from. There's no road between my breasts. Blooming hills tremble at the sight. 
billowing at the tracing of lines rising at the endless rising blanketed Madrian sky islands, tectonic tumbling seams of the Sierra Madre, pine oaks peak out, ancient alpine mountains of my desert sea, my arid grasslands cradle, peaks named with expiring words, Huachuca, Pinaleño, Santa Catalina, cached mercury, tints to dirt hemmed edges of tan, yellow, gray, pivoting irrigation centers of green, gray, spitting out dust from 34,000 feet. Think of me as a woman, pours leaking salt, exerted, worked, squeezed, ridged and wild-bodied peaks, climbing and falling, pruning the stones, years of water tumbling back to my seas. I am the desert hera, sucking you dry, absorbing your waterless body into hers, reminding you who come to harvest, to marvel, to take back to metal coffins you built to the ground they were mined, for nothing you build here belongs here. Thank you. Every Friday, I take a masked walk, clutching a $5 bill to buy roses from you, huddled in rags outside Target. When the virus withers on the vine, I will visit you there, still rooted, infected by thorns, our arms bearing the same scars. And um, I'll finish this little sampler of Sarah's work with, with this poem, which, um, which uh, is written in the voice of a, someone applying for a job, just something during this pandemic we've, throughout America, um, this has been happening. Dearing, dear hiring manager, the note says sent Thursday, 12-14-2018, 12.46am, to Natalie Jones, subject re-job application. Dear hiring manager, I'm hoping that the waiter job at this Denny's is still available, as I am still available, and desperately in need of money and the exchange of bodily labor for money, so that I may buy food and a place to sleep because so far I've been sleeping in a hotel room that smells like dried hay and black beans. And more than anything else, I would love to bring pancakes to your customers and to refill the syrup bottles. And I would especially like to note that I would not mind cleaning them. And in fact, I notice they're very dirty. And I would make that my first task, to clean the syrup from the outside of their bottles if I should be selected for the open position. All this is to say that I thank you for considering me for the position and hope to hear from you soon. I do not have a resume or other employment references to speak of, but if you want, you can call Sandy, 5716-399-689. She is my case manager, and she says I've been doing real good, and I'm sure she will give me a good review so that I can be in the running in gratitude and in hope that you will call me soon so that I no longer have to send these emails from the library. I would greatly appreciate it, Winston. <laughs> Sarah Cahill Marin. I'm going to read from 10,000 Steps Against the Tide. I'm very proud of this book. It's, it's the new book. It's also um, a book which has a, a very beautiful design. My son Arnadin. Uh, has done the, the covers of a number of my books, and I'm particularly impressed by this one. And you know, we all walk our 10,000 steps, and the tyrant in this case had orange hair. Um, <laughs> but, you know, there are many tyrants in the world, as we know. The right path. Let us roll America. Let us not look back. Let us seize the fellow by the absent coattail. Let us reveal the traipsing emperor nude, and let us remember and defend the rights of our virus dead.
but let us do so with respect, with love. Why? Because Jesus says so. Why? Because we are not jackals and hyenas. Why? Because we have to get back on the road to the promised land. Thank you. There are two parts to the book, the mother of elections and the mother of pandemic. So, and you know, but there's also a real mother in this book. Uh, my mother and all mothers, and uh, with a different definition, you know, because the mother of elections, the mother of pandemic suggests some kind of calamitous situation. This one's called Voting Song. I'm going to take mother to the polling station. This may be her last chance to vote for the right path from the burning bush, sinking ship, roadkill, victims of the raging virus. I'm going to take mother to the polling station. And son, make sure you get that absentee ballot sent here while you visit. Every vote will count. And daughter, although you cannot vote, not this time, I want you to know that we have tried with all of our heart and mind to throw the bastards out. <laughs> Voting song. Soul rising. I miss you something fierce. I have to tell my bones to stop shaking, to calm down, that there is something called work, poetry, cleaning the room, getting food together, attending to mother, reading fine print and polling, picking up the phone, cold calling a Texan in the name of participatory democracy, the nations and the earth's soul and the dream, jostling about in the coffin, thinking the time is now to break down the wood, pierce the earth, slide out to walk abroad again through these United States. So there's the dream in the coffin, sort of trying to break out, right, at midnight. Um, just to give you a, of course, a, a number of the, uh, these poems were written in 2020 during the campaign. This one's called, We're Going to Pennsylvania Avenue. We're going to Pennsylvania Avenue, to 1600 to be precise. We're getting on buses and trains. We're walking on Rock Creek Trail. We're taking Ubers and lifts to airports. We're wearing masks. We have washed our hands. We're going to take planes, all the planes, special charter flights on the way to Washington National, Washington Dulles, Baltimore International. We're starting now. Some of us will need time to secure our homes, to assure that a designated family member, a friend, a driver, a walker, a housekeeper will take care of the cat, the dog, the birds. We're going to Pennsylvania Avenue, to 1600 to be exact. We've got our kids with us too. They are used to being out of school. And this is a lesson in life, in hope, in history, my friends. And some of us will take our pets as well, whatever we can manage. We're not making iron-fisted rules. We're not going to separate kids from their parents. We're not going to stop migrants from getting food and shelter. We're not going to allow our values to be written over anymore. Not anymore. We're going to Pennsylvania Avenue, to 1600 to be exact. We accept the invitation from Kamla and Joe, from neighbors and friends who tell me that it is we who will determine our destiny, we who will rescue our dream. So Kamla, Joe, we have your back and we are in front of you as well. And by your side, we are walking, getting into cars, trains, Buses, planes, we're on our way, and we're not going to stop on November 3rd. No, sir, no, ma'am. On January 20th, we're going to fill every square inch of the mall, and we're not stepping, stopping even then. We're going to go back home, renewed, energized, ready to bring the prodigal son, the prodigal daughter, the prodigal father, the prodigal mother, back to work, to life, to the dream. Yes, we will. Thank you. Um, love your neighbor. I know it's an old line. I do believe it. God gave you a son and daughter, father and mother, brothers, a sister. Your parents brought you up. 
Now it is your turn to care for mother in her old age. And so it shall be when you too will need your son and daughter to come and do the needful, to care for you when ill and feeble. You are lucky to have children. What about those whose kids have been taken away, shot in the street, in a foreign land, fighting for some vague motive in the head of a headless government? What about those who have nobody, who must depend on the village, on a friend? Let us remember the neighbor. Let us take care of each other. Thank you. Um, you know, Georgia is still on my mind. <laughs> the poem is called Georgia on My Mind Forever. As you know, Ralph Warnock is in a pitched battle trying to keep his Senate seat there. Georgia on my mind forever. Jimmy Carter is walking proud today in the fields of plains. Stacey Abrams is working the phones in Atlanta. Librarians in charge of all public and private book collections are dusting off studies that examine FDR's triumph in the state, Jimmy Carter's presidential victory, and Bill Clinton knew young Paul how he squeezed by in 1992. Now in 2020, Joe Biden is bringing back the bacon and the greens and the dream, breaking down that bloody wall between red and blue. One country, one dream. Georgia, you are making us feel a shiver in our spine, a song bursting forth from our lungs. Ray Charles in the state capitol in 1979 at the piano, an old song for the new South, Georgia on my mind. Thank you. I mentioned the mother of elections, the mother of pandemics. Now from the, the mother of pandemic section of the book, which um, is of course the, the situation in which we've all been living these last few years now. Late night olive oil. Let us put the letters and fears and boiling emotions on the page, mummy. Why did you go to the kitchen stealthily without a word to your sleeping son, without your walker, to find the large bottle of olive oil, to pour it on the table and floor, to fill a small vessel which you meant to carry back to your room as if nobody would notice until you called my name because you could not negotiate the rest of the way from dining table to bedroom, vessel in hand, without cane or walker. I write to atone for my flailing words, saying, never, never, never again. The kitchen is prohibited. Your mania for oil in the hair is prohibited. The stealthy, mischievous, childish, truant foray into the darkness with a torch in hand, which you forgot on the countertop, all of this is prohibited. Your losing memory and control are prohibited. These words are prohibited. Decline and death are prohibited. Thank you. So you can see the mother is everywhere in this book. They're really political love poems, I'd call them, you know. Um, I'd also like uh, Stai Pibis to read two or three from the migrant states. So I'll finish this reading with this short poem called Torch, one of the last poems in the book. The flame may seem fragile, small, almost nothing at all. But as you carry it from room to room in the dark, the bobbing, flickering wick lights up mind and heart and gives hope. And the sun is waiting around the corner of morning to come on stage to rise. Thank you. 10,000 steps against the tyrant. And then... Uh, the Migrant States. Um, when I published my first book, The Elephants of Reckoning, uh, a critic and poet, uh, A.K. Ramanujan, said it was a welcome addition to the poetry of migration. Now that phrase has stuck with me throughout my life, the poetry of migration. I, um, and in this book, I'm engaging in a conversation with a great American poet, Walt Whitman, throughout the book, there are these poems addressing Walt. And on his 200th birthday, I wrote this poem. It's called Walt 200. Break the lock, unleash the mind. Walt Whitman is left from a knock. 
He is abroad. He's sitting among us in our soul. He flies the post with pigeons and the giant freight planes. He hops freight trains and rides into Mexico. He's on a piano cruise visiting St. Kitts in Barbados. He has joined the merchant marine. He sails into Guantanamo. He throws fish into the sea in search of whales. He has the biggest, longest beard in the world. He jives, thrives, cavorts, shimmers. He is 200 years old today, and he does not give a flying rat. He is in your mind, Mr. President, even if you cannot smother or scratch or squeeze him out. He is gloriously spirit, gadfly, rabbit, and sloth. He nurses our democratic wounds. He knows how to write history from the pebbles view, the side glance of the red, the snake hanging in the tree. He is black and white and all shades of gray. He is our friend and guide and he will, he, and he will um, elect us every time we fall down. Let us go back to Pomonok with what we've learned these 200 years. Let us go back to set forth again. Walt Whitman in our backpack. Thank you. The next poem, The Migrants Reply, um, well, you can f find some of my poems on the Poetry Foundation website. This one was picked up there. But it was written again during the, the previous presidency, during that policy on the, of, you know, shutting off the border. The migrants reply, we have been running for so long. We're tired. We want to rest. We don't want to wake up tomorrow and pack our bags. We have gone 10,000 miles. We have boarded a rowboat, tugboat, bus, freight train. We have a cell phone and some bread. Our eyes are dry. Our breath needs washing. What next? You're putting up a wall on your southern flank. What an irony. The country that accepts refugees does not want us. We qualify, we have scars, and our host governments hunted, at least some of us. The rest fled in fear. Gangs do not spare even the children. White vans took away our uncles and our cousins. Do you think they've been made into plowshares? Aye, what are you saying? Too easy, too easy to wear our hearts in these words, in slings on our faces, furrowed, perplexed. What happened to kindness to strangers? Why do we have to be herded like prisoners held in a holding camp? We are human beings, and like you, in safer countries, we have the same obligation to, our, to save ourselves and our children. Oh, the children, look at them. Give them food and school and a new set of clothes. Give them a chance, whether you are red or blue, the eye of the hurricane does not discriminate. We are your tumbling weeds, hurling cars, flooding banks, and we are diggers of the dikes. We can teach you so many languages and visions, you would learn so much, you would never, ever say, lock us up. Thank you. You will get a chance to look to read through my books you'll notice there's the personal and the political they sort of make go in and out and I think I'll I'll finish with I th I'm not sure of the time but I, do I have a time for a couple of points yeah I'll finish with um, or maybe I'll finish with a, a poem also from this book Blue Window but let me read one more from the Migrant States Summer chess for Anandan. You go now and I'm sad. And the sadness will spill into late summer and autumn until we meet again when the leaves fall and chestnuts smack our memories alive. And you ask, Dad, did you always walk in Regent's Park when leaves turned red and yellow and the morning bristled and the sun seared yet left your skin cold? A cold sun, Dad. I feel it too. This summer that I thought would go slow has turned now into a sprinter's dash. And what's to do? Yes, write and fill days with friends and games and sums. 
until next summer, until the next time we go to bed to know there's no morning flight and your queen and rook are ready to trap my king. And uh, the short poem for Lola, my, uh, my daughter, Morning Mass Halloween, hushed tones, place of worship, early morning, a woman kneeling in the pew could not get up. The priest brought her communion, then another parishioner called for an ambulance. The fireman, a friend of the ambulance driver, arrived in his fire truck. They worked together, naturally. What to do now? Walk to the font, dip fingers in holy water, then go out to my car. Paramedics will lay her on a stretcher, pump her heart, wheel her away to the hospital. Life is coming to its end. A repeat. In my dad's case, his heart stopped while he kneeled at a pew. Nobody could revive it. He would have loved to see my daughter smiling as she guards the witch's cauldron, this Halloween, sweets in hand. Thank you. And let me just say, Blue Window is a book I wrote in Spanish, uh, Ventana Azul. And Jennifer Rathburn, who is a wonderful poet and translator, translated it into English. It was an odd thing, but I worked with her also, of course, reviewing her translations, and I'm very happy, very proud of this book. And I want to just finish with uh, a very brief poem from this book, which um, perhaps says it all, I hope. I'll read the Spanish, three lines, and then the English, three lines. En pocas palabras, todos nacen crecen, se enamoran, se decepcionan, sobreviven, se enamoran, sobreviven, se alegran, dejan de crecer, disminuyen, se mueren. In a few words, everyone is born, grows, falls in love, is disillusioned, survives, falls in love, survives, is happy, stops growing, diminishes, dies. <laughs> I don't know if I should finish on those words, but um, I have to tell you one little story. In Haiti, where I worked for three years, uh, there's a, a line about the hat, you see. The, the, the pace, um, sans chapeau, the, the country without a hat is, is, is the afterlife, it's death, you see. So you notice that my hat is still on. <laughs> and I'm planning to keep it on for a while yet. Thank you very much. Good evening. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Indran. Let's hear it again for him. All right, we're going to get going with, we're going to, you can, um, after all the open mics, you can take a look at all the books out there. He has a nice collection, although not all 20, but he's got a good selection out there. We're going to have our first open mic poet come.